Good morning and uh, welcome to another daily devotion. We are still in uh, the subject of prayer in the Sermon on the Mount and uh, we are still looking at the Lord's Prayer or as we labelled it a few weeks ago, the Disciples' Prayer. The Lord, the prayer that the Lord taught his disciples. I don't know about you, but a question that we often have in our house Uh, It seems to echo through the house on many occasions during the day. And it's this, what should you eat? (laughs) And uh, and it's not just from who you might think it's from. It's from most the three of us in the house. We're usually asking the question, what should you eat? And one of my stock replies is this, well, there's bread in the bread bin. Uh, Many people depend on bread, don't they, Uh, for their daily physical survival. And in the Lord's Prayer, Jesus comes to that next phrase and he says, give us this day our daily bread. And um, where would we be without bread? Uh, I know it's one of my uh, weaknesses. Uh, I do love uh, a slice of bread and butter and uh, some jam. But uh, don't tell anybody about that. But give us this day our daily bread. We've considered so far as we've looked at the Lord's Prayer, the necessity of having the correct approach in our prayers. That is that it's the Lord first. And uh, we remember that we are seeking his glory. We remember his holiness and his power. And then that his will should be paramount in our existence. And so the next issue, after thinking about come in and approaching God in the correct manner. The next issue that we have to consider is this, ourselves. Remember we said this when we started looking at this prayer, that it's God first, then us. God first, then us. And we have to keep that in mind. However, I don't know why, but many people seem to neglect praying for themselves. And I've been asked many times, should I pray for myself? And I said, of course we should. We are there. We should be able to converse uh, with the Lord in prayer. And sometimes we neglect this in our spiritual journey. I don't know why. Perhaps we are um, embarrassed. Perhaps we are a bit self-conscious. We don't think we should be asking God to help us in any particular way. But here we are asked to pray for our daily bread. Now, to his listeners, uh, these words of Jesus would have been completely normal, a sensible statement, because bread was always baked fresh every morning. It was collected from the baker or it was made at home. I remember a number of years ago when we were in uh, Bethlehem and I was there with dad and a friend of dad's. We were there doing some building work on uh, one of the the homes out there, the children's homes. And um, I remember every morning that Sammy, who was our host, he would go out every day and get this fresh bread just across the street. It was absolutely gorgeous, covered in butter. You didn't need anything else. It was absolutely wonderful. And so this is still going on. This is still a constant event in parts of the Middle East. And you go to other countries as well, and you still see where people go out for their daily bread. I'm sure if you've been to France on holidays, Uh, You've looked forward to having your fresh baguette baked every morning. But it's not like us today, is it? How many of us have plastic wrapped bread in the bread bin? It stores for a week. It's convenient. It's helpful when you are desperate. But there is nothing better than a loaf of homemade bread. It really does get your day off to a good start. And Jane, I must admit, she does make some absolutely wonderful bread. And uh, as I'm sure you know, those of you who know me, you can see the effects of that quite openly. But what is he really saying here? When we pray this, give us this day our daily bread. Well, we are saying this, Lord, I'm relying on you for the essentials of life. My daily bread. We must be very careful that we don't make our prayers just a shopping list of things that we want. But here the Lord encourages us to seek God for our basic necessities. That's all we need, our daily provision. Lord, look after me today. 
you know, sometimes we we perhaps want too much. We, we are trying to plan too far ahead. But the Lord just says, concentrate on today. Let's get through today. Let's see how we get through today. Why is this important? Well, what we have to understand is that everything that we have comes from the Lord. It is all provided by God. If we go back to Genesis chapter 8 and verse 22, we see there part of the Noahic covenant. This covenant that was made with Noah, and it was to provide for our physical needs. And the Lord said that while earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest. And he says, so as long as the world is, he says, I'm going to provide seed time and harvest. Nature will continue to produce the food that you need in order to survive. If we believe then that he is the source of our provision, then why should then all the more that we should ask him to help us with our daily needs. You know, I've been amazed recently how many people, even in our own communities, in the 21st century, in modern uh, United Kingdom, are going without their daily needs. I recently visited somebody with, uh, with Pastor Peter Cho. Uh, we visited a man and he had absolutely nothing. And we were able to just leave him some simple things to help him uh, just to feed him for a few days until we could he could get himself sorted out with help from the local authorities but just to think that's just one person that we visited on one day and how many other people now are reliant on organizations such as the food banks which are doing a tremendous job and again at tabernacle i know that the food bank is such a a, a popular uh, ministry. People are coming regularly, both to give, but more, more so to, to receive, you know, and it really does shock me. And uh, to think that we are living in a generation where we have everything high tech and everything modern, and yet there are people who are going without their daily needs. Somebody said to me once when I was at the food bank on a Friday, and, and this, this young woman said we, we were able to, to pass on some fresh vegetables that we had and she said my children haven't had fresh vegetables for probably four or six weeks <laughs> and I could I was shocked absolutely shocked and you know we should be so thankful first of all that we have our daily provision but we should also recognize and try to help those who who don't we see a type of this, don't we, where the, the Lord provided for the Israelites in, in the Old Testament. As they were coming out of Egypt and they were going through the wilderness, uh, he said, you can collect manna every day. He said, I'll provide daily for you. He said, I'll provide food for you daily. Go out every morning and collect the manna. And that's good. It's a good illustration, first of all, of God's provision. But secondly, of our part in that, that we have to have our role and fulfill our role in order to obtain what God has provided for us. And so that's why we should pray. And that's why we should go to the word of God on a spiritual and on a practical level. And then note just the simplicity of this request. Bread. How simple is some bread? We are not to look for too much. But concentrate on today and what we need. We waste too much time. We also waste too much food, but we waste too much time. And uh, it's interesting, actually, I was recently studying uh, something about an eco gospel, which, OK, I, I wasn't totally convinced about it. But how important it is that as Christians, as human beings, we care for our planet and we, we care for our natural resources and we try to recycle and we try to look after uh, the earth that we have been given. Uh, to look after. But sometimes we can waste so much time on trivial things, asking God for this, asking God for that, asking God for the other, that we forget to concentrate on seeking the kingdom of God. Sadly, we get things the wrong way around. We seek our physical and personal comfort before we seek our spiritual blessing. And Paul reminds Timothy, doesn't he, in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 8, and he says these words, if we have food and clothing, with these we shall be content. And you know, there's 
there's there's an awful lot of emphasis today based on what we have, what we can get. And Paul says, look, as long as you've got some food and you've got clothes on your back, you should be content with what you have. Now, as we talk about bread, it's also interesting to notice that Jesus uses this as a term of self-revelation. In John chapter 6 and verse 35, he says, I am the bread of life. And so here we see, whereas we've concentrated perhaps on our physical needs and on spirit on, on physical bread and, and what we need to eat here we are talking about the spiritual side of things we're talking about the spiritual emphasis and particularly the eternal life that god has available through jesus christ he says you can receive of me you can eat of me if you like you can take of me and you can benefit from me just like you would benefit from eating bread and that sustains you through the day he says, you can take of me and it will sustain you, not just through the day, but into eternity. And so therefore, we learn from this one statement how important this, this subject and picture of bread is. It's about the Lord's provision, yes, for our daily needs, but more importantly, for our spiritual needs. So we can have eternal life through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we can have natural life through the provision of nature's supply, which is how God has ordained the world to work. And so today, as you pray, ask the Lord to provide. Ask the Lord to provide what you need to survive, both physically, but also spiritually. And also, let's be praying for those who are in need. And, uh, OK, it's easy to pray. But why not consider supporting some kind of ministry, such as the food bank? There's so much that needs to be done. There are so many people that need help or some other project that perhaps you are aware of. It's amazing how many people are in need of basic essentials. And can I encourage you that as the Lord has given to you, as he provides for your needs, then you too can help others and provide for their needs. So let's pray today. Pray that God will bless us in order that we might be a blessing to other people. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you and we thank you for your provision, both physical and spiritual, both material and uh, that of our faith. And so we just come before you this morning and we ask, Lord, that you will help us to be very aware of the needs that we have and the needs that we see around us. Help us to help other people. Lord, will you provide, provide through us so that other people might be blessed and benefited. And so we just commit ourselves to you today and we ask that in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, that you will go with us, you will help us and you will bless us. In Jesus' name, amen.